Hello everybody, welcome to the League of 72 Live. My name's Will Brazier. No, I'm not James Alcott. He's on holiday. Well-deserved break, but we've got an action-packed show for you today. I know everybody says that, but today it's bursting at the scenes. We've got special guests galore, a lot to focus on, a lot to get through. But if you want to get in touch with the show, make sure you use the hashtag LO72 to get in touch. There's plenty to talk about, isn't there? First of all, we're looking at that only in the EFL, but before we get to that, Let's talk about who we've got on the show today. We've got Mark Warburton joining us, the QPR manager. Fantastic start to the season for them. We're breaking all that down. Maybe chatting a little bit about Rob Dickey. Looking forward to the rest of the season and Charlie Austin. Then we're joined by comedian and Swindon, Swindon Town superfan, easy for me to say, Ivo Graham. And his favourite player, the man that's caught his eye over the last couple of years, Anthony Grant, the general. He was going, he was staying. He's there now, lots to break down with them. They'll be joining us in the second half of the show. But as always on League of 72, we start off by looking at only in the EFL. What's caught your attention? Is there any anecdotes that we've missed? There's a lot of stuff that happens in the Football League that could only happen in the Football League. And that is where we break it down right now. And we're looking at this. Now, we've all got situations where, you know, we've been asked to go on nights out and maybe, you know, we've got their... I mean, it sounds like my friends are leaving me and uh, this is what it's happened sometimes. But Harry Pell, told by Cameron Burgess at the summer, he said, all summer long, come to Aki Pella. You'll love it here, Pella. Spend loads of times together, Pella. And then at the end of the month, Cameron Burgess signs for Ipswich Town. He's gone. So it's like, a, for me, we're sort of talking like a modern day, not a modern day, but like a sort of equivalent from Accrington Stanley to Barnsley. You know, Aguero's there, Messi. He thought he was going to play with him. He thought he was going to play with the player he spends all his time with at Argentina. It was Messi. I'm not comparing Messi to Cameron Burgess. Maybe I am, but he's gone and he's left him. But if you've got anything like that, Liga72, get in touch. Use that hashtag and we'll feature him later in the show. Get involved in the comments as well. Another one that's not so much of a um, only in the EFL, but I don't want to start on a downer. You know, I'm, I'm here for the week. Who knows if I'll be back, but... I don't want to start on a downer, but there's something that's happened. You know, I used to play in goal um, for my beloved Meadow Park. I'm six foot five, terrible in my hands. They put me in goal. But as we can see here, Pontus Dalberg, it's coming up right now. Joe Pritchard with it, you know, a speculative strike from range. Oh, no. And, and he's had a few chances there to push it out. Oh, no. I mean... It's not the best, is it? I mean, we've all been there. I mean, maybe not all of us. I think I played every position at Sunday League, but Pontus Dalberg won't want to see that back. And that's why we showed it twice. But let's, should we get into the action? Like I said, we've got Mark Warburton joining us very shortly. Unfortunately for Jim, he's away on holiday and his beloved Mark Warburton is joining us. But we're starting in the Championship. And of course, we're starting at St Andrews. And I thought it was going to be, you know, I thought it was going to be waxing lyrical about that but let's have a look at the the results as well before we get to St Andrews lots of results coming in over that it was a full fixture list I say we started at St Andrews it was that sort of 2-0 win for Bournemouth there Derby County picking up another crucial three points as well Blackburn who I'm sure we'll come on to speak about later on as well fantastic result for them away at Nottingham Forest but it's you couldn't have me on I'm a Birmingham City fan so we're gonna have to start with St Andrews um Birmingham City nil, Bournemouth two. Uh, we've got the highlights coming up for you now. It was a, I mean, I watched it. I sat down. We'll get on to Birmingham. But Dom Solanke, who's getting a run of games at this level, and he's starting to find his feet, and that's a fantastic finish for him. Um, and then the young player, Scott Park, is putting a lot of faith in youth. And Anthony with the goal there, fantastic for him. Not so much good for me. The average age of last night's side was 22.9. Um Marcondes, the oldest player there at 26. So Scott Parker putting a lot of faith in the youth. Gavin Kilkenny, another one standing out for me, sort of that anchor of midfield, really sort of directing and dictating play. So, I mean, I still can't believe that Bournemouth have got Scott Parker. Marco Silva's obviously doing a fantastic job at Fulham, but for Bournemouth, that I mean, very, not, not lucky, but they're, they're very fortunate to have Scott Parker there and they would definitely be up at the, the, the end of the season. Moving on to Birmingham. Well, I was going to say I was optimistic going into the start of the season, and I was, but I, I always am, you know, even through Lee Clark 
uh, Gianfranco Zola, I know, wasn't there at the start of the season, but, you know, you give everyone a bit of trust. But the thing that really gave me faith in Lee Bowyer was we'd had a terrible season under Ito Karanka. He left. The first game back, we had Redding at home. Lukas Jukovic had been in the cold, on the bench, barely even featuring. Bowyer said, Juki, come on, get to that back post. We'll get the crosses in and you will be fine. Three minutes into that game last season, we went one and up. We went on a run, stayed up. I think it was 16 points out of 18 in the first six games. Unbelievable form. And then we went into this summer, this pre-season, um, and I think a lot of Blues fans were optimistic. And when I say optimistic, I don't mean I think we're going to get promotion, even though I have, you know, I've, I've put a bet on promotion, even though I've done that for the last 20 years, I think. But I put a little bit of faith in Lee Bowyer because... The recruitment's right. He's brought in Tahith Chong from Manchester United. A lot of the United fans that I know were questioning not his ability, but his sort of physicality on the ball. And I think that was evident against Sheffield United, working so hard for the team, up and down the pitch, man of the match performance. Ryan Woods coming in on a free for us as well, dictating the play. And already you can see we're moving away, hopefully, from that sort of... You know, we've got it in our locker. If we need to use it, we've got the long ball approach. We can, we can dump it into Duke. But there is evidence of... A bit more of a, a bit more of a style, a bit more on the ball, a bit more possession coming forwards, and Ryan Woods is crucial for that. And I think for all Blues fans, I think we still can't believe we've still got him because he's a fantastic talent in Maxime Collin. Just especially on that right wing now, getting a lot more of the ball and can be a lot more effective. And that was no more evident with that first game of the season when he popped up with headers. Um, but let's pop over now to the Hawthorns, which is not something I like to do often, but. They beat Sheffield United last night 4-0. Let's get the highlights in. It was the furlong flinger. That's what I'm calling it. Long balls galore. Set pieces. I think they're, they're up there. They're the... I think they're either first or second with the expected goals from set pieces. But the corners and the throw-ins were deadly last night. Sheffield United couldn't deal with that. Obviously, a new keeper in there. Ramsdale off to Arsenal. Alex Mowat with his first goal for the club following Val across from Barnsley there. He'll be delighted with that. I think we're going to see another, look at that, just flying it in. Football's very simple, isn't it? Callum Robertson with his third goal in three. Bit of a different role for him as well, playing a bit more central when he thought he'd be out on that wing, but he's grabbed another one. And Daro Shea, like we said, two goals in the first three games for them, but they're looking absolutely fantastic. And, you know, there is a rivalry between Birmingham City and West Brom. So when I say I'm worried about how West Brom are playing, I mean, I think they're going to do really well this season. They're from front to back, the intensity is there. I think the, the worrying thing for me was for Sheffield United, West Brom playing such a high line and you've got Brewster on the bench and he doesn't even feature. Now, obviously he didn't have the, the best of times in the Premier League, but I think it was clear to see for everyone when he was at Swansea, his striking power and what he can do. Let's move across the league table quickly and see what's in play. Like we said, West Brom top there. No one's got 100% record so far, but West Brom and Fulham with seven points. Queen's Park Rangers there with seven points, who we'll be coming on to very shortly. My beloved Blues in 14th. I'll snap your hand off right now. Preston and Forrest yet to get on the points table. But that's enough about me talking about Birmingham City, because the one I know I'm talking about, that's up for debate. But joining me now, I'm pleased to say, is QPR manager Mark Warburton. Mark, how are you? Well, very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. We were chatting off there. You've literally just got back from Middlesbrough. So, uh, I mean, how are you feeling? Yeah, a great result. You know, we had a tough a tough evening in terms of the early penalty, which I felt was a, an awful decision. Um, if, if you give this, you're going to have five, six penalties every single game. Um, then we lose a play on 50 minutes to two yellow cards out of 10 men. Uh, and we came out really well. One nil down at half time. We find ourselves 2-1 up, pegged back to 2 all when everyone expected them to go on and win it. And we scored a really good third goal as well. And, and I think we ran out deserved victories in the end. I mean, I've got down here, uh, it's an enjoyable game. That's what the EFL are all about. But I mean, as a manager on the sideline, when it's one of these games, are you just, I mean, taking it minute by minute or is, are the nerves kicking in? What's it like as a manager? No, nah, I've, I've got to say at the moment, this season, I said to players, there's a, a real evident self-belief about them. I felt this time last year, we had some quality, obviously the quality, but lacked a little bit of self-belief and confidence. Um, and that's I'm seeing that now. You know, they're going to places like Hull, like Middlesbrough, um, and knowing what they have to do to win. 
I know they have the quality in the ranks. If they do certain things, they will win the game of football. So really very proud of them last night and the character they showed, the effort they put into the game. But they deserve to win it. We had some good chances, you know, in the second half there, even with 10 men. So they deserve a lot of credit. But it's one game, Will. We have to move on quickly. We're the early game sat in there against Barnsley. And we have to prepare for that as best we can. I mean, just on last night, you mentioned it there. You're away at Middlesbrough. For many, people have put them up there with sort of promotion contenders. It's a Neil Warnock side. But you go down to 10 men and then retake the lead. I mean, for you, that must just give you so much hope and sort of, um, you know, praising the team looking for the rest of the season. Yeah, it does. Because one, you've got to deal with the physical aspect of, of defending against it. You know, they've got some very high quality players. You've got the likes of Matt Crooks, who I signed previously at Rangers, but very talented six foot four player. Ig Piazza, you've got Tuba Akpom, you've got Fry and Hall at the back and come on. House and McNair midfield, you've got some really talented players. Young boy Jones, an academy product on the wide left, Will, very, very talented boy. So you have to defend your goal with a real passion uh, and desire, but at the same time, pose an attacking threat. And that's what pleased me most of all. We didn't sit back behind the ball and try and defend that goal. We attacked them. We got two quick goals, got two one up. And as I said, two all, the whole stadium thought they're going to win it. And we got a really, really well-crafted third goal. So pleasing to see. Worked the ball very well around the pitch and get the rewards. And then the 10 minutes added time to rub more salt into a wound. And we defend really well for that 10-minute period and look comfortable. So, as I say, a lot, of, a lot of credit deserved by the players. But we have to move on. It's a good three points, six points on the road, which is pleasing for anyone, of course. But now we've got to focus on a very tough test at the weekend. Rob Dickey, I mean, we couldn't have you on and not talk about him. He's becoming a human highlight reel, not just by, by his goals, but even that sort of goal line saving uh, clearance against Hull. Just, I mean, if you could talk about his performances this season, I'm, 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 we could be here for another 45 minutes. Now, I think you, what you're seeing are, are young players um, who benefit enormously from last season, Will, in terms of getting used to the championship. You know, that's a Chrissy Willock as well. These type of boys, Ilias Chair. Yeah, you look at Senny Dieng in goal, but Rob is so comfortable on the ball, physicality, aerially strong, but passing, you know, the, his technical base is so sound. So he's a very, very talented player, but he will benefit from this next year in the Championship. And I hope very much he goes, and I've got no doubts he'll go to the high level. No doubts at all. Hope it's with QPR if all goes well, but his quality, his desire, his application, all the words you want to use are there in abundance. And it, obviously he's playing in that back three and he's coming out forward. And is it just so pleasing to see it? I mean, especially the first game, it's no more evident with the goal. But just how crucial is that for him, for you going forward? I want both centre-halves. Johan Barbe is very, very technically gifted as well. But to have your centre-halves on both sides step in and create that overload um, sounds very basic, sounds very obvious. But it's, it's so effective if done well by good players. And players have got to be brave as well. You can't just say it's centre-half driving at midfield and create that overload, they've got to have the confidence and the, and the skill to do so. Uh, and I'm very pleased that Johan, Jordi, you know, again, Jordi De Vies coming through the Dutch academy system, very technically strong. So we have three centre-halves who can deal with the football. Lee Wallace at wing-back, Mozo De Bayou, these type of players, very comfortable going forward, give us an, another outlet, attacking outlet, which has proven so effective. So, yeah, we're, we're a good team, but teams will, will look to stop us. We've got to try and, and, and obviously stop them to gate their threats as well. It's a tough, tough league. But right now, we had a good start. Speaking of attacking threats, there's no more evident in Charlie Austin. I was listening to um, an interview with Rob Dickey yesterday, and he was just speaking about not only his obvious impact on the pitch, but even his impact for people like Lyndon Dykes off the pitch. Just how crucial is Charlie to you at QPR? Yeah, very important. Obviously, his affiliation with the club was clear for all to see. His, his track record, proven goal score at the highest level, and he thoroughly enjoys scoring goals. But it's his input as that mentoring role on and off the pitch that that Rob referred to, but the likes of Stephanie Hansen, again, outstanding last night, Charlie, Steph, Lee Wallace, Albert Adoma, we have got four top-class senior pros. And I'm always talking about the impact they have in so many different areas. But you see here the goals are scoring. Look at Albert, we work it here. But again, Charlie getting over, great header there. And that was a good away win at Watford last season, second half, when we were so strong. So those senior pros and Charlie Austin, his love for the club, the fans see it every single time. And it has a real impact, you know. But all of those senior boys deserve enormous credit. Just another player as well we wanted to feature as well. He's obviously scoring the winner last night, Chris Willock. I mean, I don't want to talk about his brother because it's too cliche, but he's a fantastic talent in his own rights, isn't he? I mean, even the assist with the, with the chip ball over the, the top, the composure in and around the box, he looks such an exciting talent. 
No, he does. And, and Chris, he had a, obviously an academy education at Arsenal, went to Benfica, um, never really broke through into the team. I think it's a very difficult move for a young player, Will. But he's come back to us. And Chris, he just needed to have that belief in how good he can be. He's got physicality. He's quick. He's strong. Technical. Te Is that you or me? Oh, I can still hear you. You're okay. My phone, my phone's off. Sorry about that. But um, no, he's got the technical base, Will, which is so, so strong. Um, and he's just having that belief in his ability, how good he can be, how he can impact games, a positive aspect he can he can apply to every game. And I think you're seeing that now. In the last season, you were starting to see more and more glimpses of it. But he started so strong. He can get the ball. Last night, he ran up four or five players. And they can't touch him. Once he enters that final third in the penalty area, you know how difficult it is for defenders. And he has that lovely ability to take them on, take care of the football, and he's scoring goals now. So I think he has a really, really bright future ahead of him. We spoke offline about this, the strength of the league and obviously when you get the, the relegated side comes down, obviously their favourites for promotion and all the sort of the strength in squad that they have. How do you look at this QPR squad? Are you, are you sort of happy with the numbers you've got or will there be a few more additions maybe going forward? Maybe one more. I think um, we, we can't lose sight of the fact we came through the pandemic. You know, and many, many clubs are still dealing with that financial impact. So, of course, the, the, the clubs coming down, the Fulham's, West Brom, Sheffield United, are always going to be favourites due to their financial power or financial muscle that they can they can apply. But also for me, when well, I look at the teams that come up because they know how to win together. So don't underestimate those teams either. But you've got to look at Fulham. You've got to look at, as I say, Sheffield and West Brom and Bournemouth, of course, to, to really push on and be the teams to beat. But QPR have kept their squad together. And it's teams like QPR, teams like Luton, Millwall, that can keep their squads together that I think can be the ones at the end of the season who will be in that top top eight position uh, and trying to push, obviously, for the playoff places. Going into the season this year, obviously, pundits and even people like me, Mark, making championship predictions, if you can believe that. But people were saying that this one is the, the most open championship in a while. How did you go into the season looking at it? I think we have to look at it and... and we we adopt the, the one game approach rule because you can you can look at the bigger picture. You can talk about the teams we mentioned earlier. I repeat myself now, but West Brom, Sheffield, Fulham. Just worry about QPR. Worry about your own team. Worry about what you're doing in terms of the squad. You know, selection availability. Worry about your environment you create for your club. As I say, by keeping the squad together, by getting those all all four lone players, Stefan Johansson, to get the Norwegian captain, uh, you know, to come to us on a permanent basis is fantastic for us. Charlie Austin, of course, Lee Wallace, Albert, as I mentioned to you earlier. To keep that squad together, we're in good place and it gives the playing squad a lot of self-belief. So that's what I mentioned to you earlier, taking that into the new season. We had a really good pre-season, some very good games against Leicester and Man U. Uh, I think it ignited the fan base. It certainly gave the players ever more belief. But you, it's all about the results one game at a time. So that belief now, good result last night, forget that. That's in the bank. Now we move on to Barnsley. And that type of approach for us, I think, is so, so incredibly important. I just wanted to touch on as well, because you've been part of the football league for such a long time now as well. And I just wanted to get your take on how you think the league has evolved, not just the championship, but even like down to League One and League Two from, from back in the day to, I mean, we, we see down to League Two and even National League now, teams playing out from the back. Yeah, it is. And it's... You know, it, it, I hate when people say the right way, playing football the right way. The right way is whatever suits the manager and the club at that relevant time with the squad that he or she has available. So, you know, it's about what I do like, though. I think the academy education, um, the EPPP that came in and, and you're looking at the, the impact it's having over a period of time now. It is filtering players down the academy as a top tier gets in more foreign players and the, 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 obviously the, very, the, the highest quality talents in the global game coming into the Premier League. You see very good players filter down the pyramid and they can adopt the tactics by coaches who are coming through the system, getting their pro license, their license, pro license and the various diplomas. So you're seeing, a, I think, a, a high quality educational base all the way down that pyramid, as you say, into the National League. Good coaches, good players now who can deal with the tactics and the ideas of the, of the young coaches. And it's good for the game, Will. It really is good for the game. And I hope very much the, uh, the end product will be more British players, more British coaches getting opportunities at the higher levels. Love that. To finally, from me, Mark, it sort of ties it all together. I know it's obviously a, a one-game approach, and rightly so for you, but to, maybe like objectives sort of off the field as well, is that to sort of develop more young players through, through the first team and maybe see them make their mark on this QPR side? 
Yeah, it's a, it's a big question that will because obviously my background is youth. I was a can director at Watford. I set the next, you know, the next gen series tournament up. I've always been involved in youth football and I love the young players doing well. But the key to it is you hear fans say, throw him in, throw that young boy in. They've got to be ready and they've got to be good enough. They've got to have that development potential that you think, actually, you know what? They've, they've got a chance. They've got to have that. The young boy I mentioned at Middlesbrough last night, Jones, come to the academy there, was outstanding. You know, a really talented boy. We've got players, Ilias Chair, Ibiri Eze, Chrissy Willett, these boys coming through. Rob Dickey, of course, all these young players. But they've got to be good enough, Will. And it, it drives me insane when I hear fans say, just throw them in, give them a chance. Because if they're not good enough and if they're not ready, they can really crumble and, and never recover from those type of experiences. So, yes, I'm a huge fan. I hope very much that we can get the young players coming through, that the fans can engage with as they sing one of their own. You love to see that. But make sure they're good enough and make sure they have the potential to deal with what is such a challenging game. Love that, Mark. Thanks so much for your time. When you come to St Andrews, if you could just go easy, that'll be all right. Maybe a score draw and we'll both be happy. <laughs> well, nice speaking to you, Will. I'm not sure about that, uh, that agreement, but we'll see when we come to playing up there. Perfect, Mark. See you soon. Thank you very much. Mark Warburton there. What a guy. Fantastic. QPR with a fantastic start to the season. And I'm sure they'll be up and around that top six when it comes to it. Maybe even more. But that's the Championship Roundup done. We are off to League One Tuesday, Wednesday night. Full fixture list was in flow. Let's have a look at the results there. We've got Portsmouth and Burton now the only teams in League One to maintain their 100% record. Wickham and Sunderland dropped their first points of the season on Tuesday night. While Fleetwood, Doncaster, Shrewsbury are still yet to get off the mark ominously for maybe the rest of the league. Sheffield Wednesday and Oxford starting to pick up form, but Wickham had to snatch a late 1-1 draw against Wigan to stay in third place. But you know what we do on this show? Jim breaks down a few key areas and we're looking first at Burton. They took on Sunderland and what a week they've had. We've got it up on here. Johnny Smith cutting in from the right. Left-footed curler, love that. Um, they registered 38% possession for the whole game. One shot on target. Burton picked up the three points in that one. What a week for them as well. They beat Ipswich and Sunderland in the space of five to six days. Many people obviously putting Ipswich and Sunderland up there for promotion. But it's the job that Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank's done. I mean, it's got people purring as well. But they are facing a high proportion of shots from open play and from set plays. And that's why I've picked out Ben Garrett as someone to, well, I mean, the Burton fans all, all know his abilities and know how well he's been doing. A great week for Burton, a great week for him. So the crucial penalty against Ipswich and then a man of the match performance for me against Sunderland, keeping out those shots as well. Lee Johnson said in the post-match as Sunderland manager, if they played that match 100 times, they'd win it 85 times Sunderland, but they didn't. And that's why Burton have got three wins from three and Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank's job. It's just fantastic what he's doing. Next, we picked out Accrington. Stanley, opening day defeat against Wickham, but they've turned it around now. Sean McConville, we've highlighted here for you. From the left, two assists at the weekend against Cambridge, as you can see here. Right and left foot, getting um, Accrington Stanley the wins. Accrington Stanley got the second fastest build-up speed in the league. That was more evident on the Tuesday night against Doncaster. But, I mean, we can have all the stats in the world if, if Kasper Dahlberg's letting in goals like that. I mean, it doesn't matter how fast you, you speed up play, how fast you're pressing is, you, you're going to get the three points. But they, they were dominant in that game. Like I said, got the five shots on target, got the two wins under the belt, and, and they're pushing on as well. We're at the top. We've got to have a look near the bottom now. And like I said when I was mentioning Burton, Ipswich Town, one point from nine game for, for one point from nine points after their three opening games last night probably the worst bit of their season so far started so well penny with a goal here keeper's got to be doing better on the near post but but um cheltenham coming back boyle with the last minute winner saturday a lot of people saying problems down the left hand side um and again the defensive errors were there they were sort of at sixes and sevens, really, when it came to defensively. And, you know, Paul Cook, there's a manager there that when I saw Karanka left, when was it? Around March, April time. I think he was one of the favourites for the Birmingham City job. Everyone knows his qualities and, and seen what he's done, what he's done there, um, and, and can sort of see see his qualities and, and what he's doing. Then we look at the, sort of the talent that's on display as well, and there's a lot of it when, when you look in that midfield. You look at Rakeem Harper, Lee Evans, Tom Carroll, 
Um, and then even the recruitment that they brought in sort of during the summer in the in the attacking options with Louis Barry from Aston Villa, who he's had a bit of game time. Uh, I think I think he started the first one, came on as a very late sub in the week as well. Sonny Aluko, a, a very experienced player that's that's been around the leagues. He's been, you know, he's seen it all. He's done it all, not like me. Um, and then Chaplin and Pickett as well. But uh, there's another clip as well. You know, I wanted to end on a high maybe for Ipswich. What could we give them to point out? But even looking at some of this, the stats behind them, they're so slow on the ball. I think it was, you know, on Football Manager, we talk about it a lot. You bring in loads of players. What do they tell you straight away? They're not going to gel. 16 new signings for Ipswich Town over the summer. And it's going to take a lot of time for them. The style of play is everything um, that Paul Cook's trying to identify. He's... He's, he's got it there, but there's just not that sort of finished product and maybe a little bit of cut through because they're, they're, they're dwelling on the ball quite a lot. But yeah, not finishing it off. We're going to move on now to league. Well, have a look at, we'll have a look at um, the, excuse me, I can't get my words out. We'll have a look at Barry Bannon now. If you are subscribed to the channel, you'll be seeing this very soon. It's another Court cool Heroes and it's with Barry Bannon. Such a key player in this side. The way he dictates, the way he gets on the ball, he's always available and he makes his side tick. And it's Bannon! Oh, what a goal that is! Barry Bannon! This is Bannon. Hooper. Bannon. To hit it! And hit it beautifully! A special goal that means a huge amount! That's a special goal from a special player. I'm trying not to enjoy that because Barry Bannon is uh, ex Aston Villa, but I mean, there's so many worldies in there. It's definitely worth a watch. So make sure you check that out on the League of 72 channel. If you want to get in contact with the show as well, make sure you use the hashtag LO72. You know, there's a lot of things that go on um, in the Football League, and you might have been there at the ground. Maybe we've missed something to so get in touch with them. And we'll be using your, you know, your clips next week, maybe. Right, on to League Two. Let's get the results in another pack fixture list. Tuesday, Wednesday games, lots to break down after a slightly reduced midweek fixture. Easy for me to say. Hits Rob Edwards' his Forest Green Rovers, who lead the table with a 100% record. Bradford and Mansfield hot on their heels. Northampton are two from two and continue their campaign at home to Rochford on Saturday, who are yet to pick up three points this season, while Oldham, who have lost their each game by a one-goal margin, remain rooted to the bottom of the table. Barrow and Swindon are both one, one win, one draw, one loss so far, and Harrogate have got some catching up to do, having only played a single game this season. But let's have a look at three teams that we're looking to break down, and we're starting with Bradford, another excellent start to the season. It's Derek Adams in charge for them, and they obliterated Stevenage on Tuesday night. Andy Cook... Coming up on the screen now, probably the performance of the week in the EFL, if I can say that. A, a perfect hat-trick down at Valley Parade. The header was there. There's your left foot. And it's coming up to the right foot now. And this is probably the best of the lot for me. Beats two defenders, cars through them. Keeper, sit down, see you later. Little dink in the balls in the back of the net. Stevenage full-backs, Ben Coker, Wilden, Torrid Knight, giving away a penalty in the 30th minute, one of those. A uh, bit of quiz time for you. Uh, last Bradford City player to score a hat-trick in the first half was Dean Windass. Do your research or just watch the telly. One for me as well, uh, Lee Angle, off penalties. Uh, scored a very, very scuffy one at the weekend. Sort of sneaked under the keeper to give him the three points. Maybe it was a sign for, for Derek Adams to maybe take him off penalties. But um, on this one... He's missed one in the first half, but it didn't matter for them. They, Bradford have created the most amount of shots in play and off play in League Two so far this season. So Andy Cook um, absolutely just 
you know, he's got the chances and, and he's putting them away so far. The next one that we're looking at is Forest Green Rovers, one of only three sides in League Two who still have a 100% record. Forest Green have been utilising that front two pairing, haven't they, of Jamil Matt and Matt Stevens, And they were both in action last night. Oh, sorry, on Tuesday night. Matt with the first goal, causing all sorts of problems as that sort of target man bringing people into play. There uh, was an equaliser there, but... He's always doing it, isn't he? Comes off him. Instinctive finish here for Matt Stevens. That's his fourth goal in three games. One of the key players that I was looking at, Kane Wilson, who you saw there getting up on the right-hand side is that right wing back. He's been performing very well at the start of the season. And Regan Hendry in the heart of that midfield, um, really good in that sort of transitional phase. He's been doing superb for Forest Green Rovers. Three games, three wins. They're looking very good, aren't they, Forest Green Rovers? And one for me as well, Rob Edwards, the manager there. It's his first full-time job in league football, but he's been part of that England set with Gareth Southgate, who's managing the England under-16. So that there feels like there's a bit of pedigree there. Forest Green do it right off the pitch, and it looks like they're doing it right on the pitch as well. Finally, from League Two, we wanted to point out Leighton Orient. Didn't play in the week, but a fantastic performance at the weekend. We're starting in the Carabao Cup, actually, the best cup in the universe, according to me. Um, Aaron Drinnan getting a bit of momentum, bagging one there. The Irish striker scored against QPR. Then he scored and assisted against Exeter at the weekend. Leighton Orient playing with three up front. Exeter just couldn't deal with it. They've got the second highest XG in the league going forward. So lots to be excited for if you're a Leighton Orient fan. And then... At the back, even though that was a 3-0 win against Exeter, Exeter did go down to 10 men as well. They've got the sixth highest XG in, con in terms of conceding as well. So, I mean, if you've got a late Norian season ticket, you're, you're in luck. It's going to be entertaining. But we're going to have a look at the league to league table, how it's all shaping out. Three games for some, two games for others. It just just one for Harrogate Town as well. They've got a lot of catching up to do. But the key standouts there for Forest Green Rovers... Um, and then, yeah, all of them really need to pick up pace. And then if we have a look at it as well, Swindon Town in ninth place. And that leads us on very nicely to where we're off to next. I'm pleased to say that we're joined by Swindon Town superfan and comedian Ivo Graham and the general Anthony Grant. Gents, how are we? I'm extremely well. <laughs> Ivo, you I'm must be will. buzzing. Your hero's here. How's that for you? It's a very, very nice feeling indeed over a video conferencing platform. Hello, Anthony. <laughs> um, this Hello. is this is just is fantastic. Oh no, Ant uh, is Anthony frozen? You might not get to meet your hero today, Ivo. Can you hear us, Anthony? Uh, you well? I can hear you. Yeah, I can't. I can hear you and see you, but you're both frozen. Oh so, well, if you can hear us, we'll, we'll crack on. I'm joined by Ivo, big su su Swindon Super Town fan, but. Uh, I mean, if you just come straight off the training pitch. Yeah, something like that here. Yeah. Trained in the afternoon. Love that. Um, lots to get through. Obviously, you've uh, you've been through a lot at Swindon Town, but lots of speculation in the summer. Where are you staying? Where are you going? I just wanted to get it from, from the horse's mouth. What was going on? What happened? Obviously, there was, uh, there was no... The ownership of the club was getting sorted out, so they couldn't offer me nothing, not not knowing who the new owner or the manager was. And then uh, Million Hall and Peacock said, oh, do you fancy coming back? I said, I'll come back and train and play. And then obviously the takeovers happened. The managers come in and see what they liked. <laughs> Love that. Uh, what is life like under the new manager, Ben Garner? Oh, it's a breath of fresh air from the previous regime. As everyone knows, uh, everyone likes playing for him. He gets his tactics spot on. And obviously he wants to play football and the boys he's brought in uh, under chores and the manager have been good decisions so far. Love that. The nickname, the general, how did it come about? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's from Ivo, I mean, who, who started it and when were you first made aware of it? Uh, it's, it's come and gone. It's come and gone. And obviously now at Swindon, after my first game, I think it was late in the way. Uh, a lot of people just tweeting the general, the general, the general. So, and then obviously, a few good performances that year. It just stuck. So, and that's why everyone calls me now. Love that, Ivo. 
Um, can you remember where you were? Was it a seminal moment when you found out Anthony Grant was saying at Swindon Town? When he was coming back, it was huge. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, the last few weeks, it's been good news after good news, but I'd say it was the best, the, the best thing that's happened in the last few weeks. Um, I mean, it does, still doesn't feel quite real, mainly because Anthony's pinned tweet on Twitter is still his farewell to the club from May. That needs to get unpinned. <laughs> You know, it was I'll a do that for you, Ivo. No farewell worries. tweet. You know, it was it was very Thank moving you. and it meant a lot. But but it needs to go now because the new era has begun. Okay, well, let's I'll speak about that, that new era. I'll get my phone. Ivo, I mean, get your questions into Anthony. There must be so much optimism. You must be you must be so happy. And even just having what's well, been seventeen thousand for the first couple of games down at the county ground, it, it must be a renewed sense of optimism. Uh, I think that would exceed the the capacity of the county ground. Um, uh, was that a collective I, attendance? Yes, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. I'm not adding on a new stand for you, sorry. Yeah, 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 but I'm, listen, yeah. the way things are going, they could announce a new stand tomorrow. Just the, 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 the pace of change is thrilling. Um, you know, Anthony has already made a, 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 a sort of very, a deftly oblique reference to last season being sub-ideal. Um, as, as a fan, watching quite a lot of extremely disappointing games on iFollow, I, I've, I've got to reiterate that through no fault of the general or most of his teammates, there was a bad Thank you, Ivo. I appreciate that. Listen. Yeah, there was a bad atmosphere nothing, in the change room too. Uh, you could sense it. And because there were no crowds and the audio on iFollow was crisp, you could frequently hear the bad atmosphere coming directly from the touchline. There was no doubt about how bad the atmosphere was and who was at fault. But the fact that we basically get another chance with a lot of the same players, players uh, like Anthony or Akinodomayo, who basically we thought we'd lost at the end of last season, and a few others who we didn't lose at all, who basically stayed with the club, like Rob Hunt, through a time when it looked like there might not be a club for a bit. And now we've got the Bens, we've got some oldies, we've got some very exciting low knees, we've got... We've got our new chairman, Clem Morfuni, who is driving around with season tickets. He's wearing bucket hats to pre-season friendlies. There was a picture of him painting something at the county ground quite recently. Uh, you know, and am I going overboard, Anthony, or is this, the, the, you know, an extremely positive thing from top to bottom? No, I was very positive and it's glad to hear it from a fan's perspective. And obviously all the players feel the same way you do. So hopefully we can do something special this season and give something back to the fans. It's just so, um, yeah, sorry, Will. No, go on, Ivo, you carry on. I don't want to ruin this moment. Well, listen, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> listen I'm, just, I'm just a man getting overexcited. Uh, of, of no, you, you've, got, you've, got every right, you've got every right to be overexcited. You but can I say and, as well? Uh, you're expressing your feelings. I, cause, because the 2019-20 title winning uh, team, of which the general was the linchpin, uh, was probably my favourite Swindon team ever. And it's a testament to the man that even when we had strikers breaking goal-scoring records, he was still celebrated as, as, the, as the anchor of that team. And we lost a lot of that team. Last season, we can now consign to the history books. But to, you could potentially be part of two... I'm not even going to say promotion-winning seasons because I think people would settle for a dignified and hearty and financially secure mid-table finish. But you get to be part of two really great stories at Swindon. And which, which I th I'd like to say thank you on behalf of everyone to you for coming back for another one. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Ivo. Um, sorry, and it's not um, very profound stuff from me, but it's, it's full of heart and meaning. I'll start no, with you, I Anthony, as well. I just I wanted to... It. No, go on, Anthony, sorry. No, go on, no, go on. I was just going to say, what's it like for both of you now? With the, with the owner, he just seems to be so transparent as well, and it obviously must be such a, a breath of fresh air. No, he is. Obviously, he's come and met the players, and he's uh, met all the staff, and he's hired the gaffer and all his staff, and it's a breath of fresh air. Like, the people he's built through the building is a bit of a, a circus act, everyone coming in, but obviously, we'd rather it be like that than nobody in the building. But he's come through the building, appointed all the right people, and everyone's pushing in the right direction. So I've got no complaints and everyone's pushing in the right direction. So hopefully we can have a good season. What about for you, Ivo? Is it the same sort of feeling? 
Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, I've got to hold my hand up and say that I haven't been down yet. Um, uh, I know we're only three games in, but I, I, I need to christen the new season uh, in person. And, and even if even if we haven't exceeded our official attendance with 17,000 fans in, it sounded <laughs> like the two the two home games so far have been like cauldrons of, of excitement and noise. Just amazing to have fans back, I imagine, as well, Anthony. Yeah, no, the fans, the first game of the season, obviously are where it's gone for. The fans just coming out for the warm-up and then coming back, uh, going back in and coming back out. It was crazy just hearing them. And obviously we went a goal behind and they still sang and then we got 1-0, 2-1 and 3-1. So it was a good victory for them to come up and uh, enjoy that. And then obviously Carlisle at home, uh, we lost that game, but they were still in attendance and could hear them in the crowd. And it was nice to hear, what was it, 8,000, 9,000? And then they came back on Tuesday night as well. I just want to get that win for them at home, that they can express their feelings and just go up and up and up from there, really. Anthony, is it sort of, obviously, Ivo mentioned the promotion season and last season, but, I mean, is there all the hallmarks of a sort of promotion season in, in terms of just the, the feeling around the club? Obviously, yeah, there's a good feeling. Like I said, the chairman... The gaffer and all their staff, the players they brought in is like the right characters around the building, young, experienced, hungry players that all want to do well, listen. Every time the gaffer speaks or his assistants or his fitness coaches or people just in and around the staff, everyone listens and everyone gets along with each other. So they're building something here, if, even if it's not this season or next season, it's, there's something going on here that I think people want to be part of. Ivo, is that the same for you? You want to be part of it? Of course. And, I, and, and truly, like even, for example, Tuesday, it was, it was such a great game. I've, and I've never seen a sort of a, a nil all responded to so positively. Because even though it wasn't, you know, nothing was quite converted, there was just so much to enjoy about it. There's a real early season zest. And, and so many of the, of the new players uh, look so exciting. Uh, Anthony, who's your favourite of the of the of the new players? If if that's not too uh, delicate, a thing oh, to this, who's going to read this? That's I've, true. I've, I've got to. Like, I've got no. Nah, I can because it's it's going to be Kane, but only only because he's my son, and I have to look after him. <laughs> Kane is great. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, he is. He's a great bundle of energy on and off the pitch, and obviously, no, nah, all the all the new players have bought something different, and the new players that the gaffer will add before the window comes in, they, they'll add something because we're obviously we're going to need them. So even like the injured players now, we're going to need them. So that's I mean, everyone's pulling in the right direction. Everyone's got each other's back. So hopefully we can just have a good season. I, I just I wanted to we'll... speak to you as well, sorry, about being a Swindon Town fan as well, because I think many, for, I'm a Birmingham City fan, everyone thinks that, you know, they, they've had it worse at, at their club. But I mean, over the years for Swindon Town, it's definitely been a roller coaster. Yeah, I mean, I think, it, you know, once you start to look at it over a period of sort of 10, 20 years, you know, most clubs have had sort of good and bad spells. Um, I'd say there have only been two seasons I've really enjoyed in the last 10 years with Swindon. Actually, that's, <laughs> not, that's, that's not fair. That's not fair. But there have been two very defining. Well, I'll just be honest. There was, a, there was a Paolo Di Canio season in 2012, which actually kind of extended into the following season. And then, uh, and then there was some lovely sort of near promotions and some exciting football under Mark Cooper. But it wasn't until two years ago um, with, I'm just going to put it down to the arrival of the general and, and the late Orient debut when we won 3-0 away at Orient in September 2019. Pre-pandemic, a different world. Six months later, you've won the league on points per game. It's not exactly how you wanted to do it, but it was triumphant. Again, skip a year. A very ugly business, a very difficult man. But now, just, I think, you know, even if it is a slow build, you just want to see your club being run well. And I think there's been a growing sense of unease over the last few years, um, which really reached a peak in the last few months. And now I know it's very early days and you shouldn't fall in love with a man just because he's worn a bucket hat and driven around in a big van. <laughs> but we've got a chairman who's making the right, the right noises. And also there is a nostalgia factor of, of people coming back. And I was going to ask Anthony, I've got to accept that, you know, Owen Doyle's probably not going to come back to Swindon. But could you have a word with Michael Doughty? Because his premature retirement, though completely understandable from family and business reasons, it does seem like a waste to have you in the centre of the town midfield and not him. I'll have a word. But obviously, he's just, 
he's just had a baby and he just wants to be a father and look after his kid. So that's, each to their own, really. So that's a very uh, a, a, a very restrained answer. I would compromise at maybe a game a month, just just, just to get okay. that dynamism. Taking away, taking nothing away from uh, Lewis Reed or any, any, you know any of the any of the new crop. You, you, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, being... I'll, I'll give him a message and see what he's doing. Um, another question from me, Anthony. Um, who is uh, sponsoring you at the moment at Swindon? Because I've uh, I. I, I... <laughs> I jumped in uh, to the Swindon sponsorship game uh, a, about a year and a half ago. I sponsored the goalkeeper Archie Matthews, who I believe is now at Birmingham. Um, yeah, so exactly. we'll, yes. we'll enjoy Archie Matthews, uh, a you. very promising young goalkeeper who benefited from some really attentive sponsorship uh, in the first <laughs> half of 2020. But, but Anthony, so, are, you, are you happy with your sponsors or are you looking for anyone else to step in because it would be a real honour? I'm not going to lie, I don't know who my sponsors are this year. I haven't had the time to look because I've been uh, getting fit for the season. Lovely stuff. But if you it want to sponsor like me, a... you can sponsor me. It feels like a window of opportunity. You know I mean, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind. Yeah, I wouldn't want Ivor Graham sponsoring me. It's not a bad sponsor, <laughs> is it? Uh, I think some people would say it's a very bad sponsor. And it, and, and it's, uh, nah, it, nah, it, not it, at all. It would be, bring shame upon you. But it would not be, at all. It would, Oh, thank you. Love that. I mean, that interview, but bringing people together and that. Just finally, gents, we have we have got a dip off. But Anthony, I wanted to ask you as well, and I, I, obviously you as well, Ivo. But Anthony, you've been playing EFL football for for seventeen years now. I just wanted to know how much the sort of games evolved over your time across the league, just on and off the pitch. Oh, massively, massively, it's evolved. Like there's more. I say it's more athleticism and. There's more defending going on and there's not much goals. It's more tactical. Before, it's just be like winners running at full-backs and getting crosses in and more goals. Now it's people doubling up and banks of this, banks of that. So it's, it's evolved massively. And obviously, even from the Prem down to League Two, it's evolved. Like the, the gap's smaller. Before, the gap was huge. But if you look at League One and League Two and the Champions, I say the Championships... You got a striker that's if you make a mistake they score. League one's more closer to League Two, but you've got a lot of League One teams that are like champ teams really. And then the Prem's just different. Like until we like you play there and you play with certain players, it's just different. And obviously you give them a chance, it's it's more likely gonna be a goal than you know what I mean? And then obviously they can keep the ball and then next next thing you know it's two nil, three nil and then game's done. I just wanted to speak to you finally, Ivo. I know Anthony can't say too much. Obviously, he's a player there. But why should we be I can excited say anything about anything you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll ask you both of you then. Where, where are we talking end of the season? Promotions on the cards? Or are we still far too early in the season to talk about it? Go on, Ivo. You first. Let's not burden this uh, swiftly <laughs> gelling team with too much expectation. If we snuck into the playoffs and pulled off something beautiful... That would be amazing, but it, ultimately, if the if the team is well run, if the uh, if the club is well run, if the team is happy, uh, if no one speaks about last season anymore, and if the club continues to pull in those seventeen thousand plus attendances every week, that that will do <laughs> just fine for the moment. Um, it's uh, it's obviously a shame to have got promoted last year and then immediately be back in uh, in League Two. But there are new grounds to go to. Looking forward to going to Sutton. Looking forward to going to Harrogate. There are going to be some really lovely times over the next year, whether promotion is on the cards or not. The fact that we have a club and we've got our club back and we've got the general back that will do. <laughs> Thank you, Ivor. What about for you, Anthony? Obviously, the manager's spoken what his plans are. Well, obviously, I don't want to say it here, but obviously, with everyone's fitness and that, everyone's playing catch up and everyone's working hard. So we take each game as it comes, but obviously, we're going to go into each game playing the way the gaffer wants to play and the mentality of going to win every game. And then, if we win every game or we'll pick up points, then we'll see where we are end of the season and we'll take it from there. Love that. And then, just finally, we can agree that Ivo is sponsoring you for the rest of the season. Yeah, I've been sponsored for the rest of the season. Perfect. Even if I'm not in the programme, even if I'm just you know paying Anthony a sum of money every week via direct debit, that's that's absolutely fine. 
I'll Love get that. I'll get oh, you onto the media. I'll get the, I'll get you the media guy to message you then. Thanks very much. Absolutely no love worries. that, Ivo Anthony. Thank you very much for joining us, and good luck with the rest of this season. Thanks, Ivo. Thanks, Will. Thanks for having us. Love that. Well, we brought. I mean, we're bringing people together. There been a fantastic show today. Massive thanks to all the guests that have joined us. Massive thanks for you for joining us at home as well. If you want to get in touch for next week, Lo seventy two as well. But you know, it's not over yet. We've got to look at those weekend fixtures. Some big ones coming up in the championship. I know my beloved Birmingham away at Luton Town. Nathan Jones doing a fantastic job there. I'm a bit worried about that. West Brom going to the unbeaten Blackburn Rovers as well. Lots of tricky ties there. Moving on to League One. Rotherham United, Sheffield Wednesday, the pick of the bunch there for me. Ipswich Town, can they get their first win against Liam Manning's MK Dons as well? And Sunderland, fresh off that defeat against Burton Albion, they go. Uh, they're at home to Wimbledon as well. We're on to League Two. Some big games as well. You know, big games every week. You know, it's it's, it's the football league. Um, we've got Salford, Swindon Town, Ivo Graham. Will he be sponsoring Anthony Grant in time? There's so many questions. Not enough time for the answers, but lots of fixtures to look forward to there at the weekend. Right, thank you very much for having me. This has been League of 72 Live. I have been Will Brazier. If you want to get in touch, like we said, use the hashtag. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Plenty coming up there, as well as that Barry Bannon cult heroes. Great to have a chat with Mark Warburton as well. Very fascinating in insight to QPR and them season. I'm just sorry that Jim couldn't be here to do it. He will be back with you next week. Massive thanks to Ivo Graham. Massive thanks to the General Anthony Grant. My name's been Will Brazier, and we'll see you very soon. <laughs>